Hey guys, Chris here from ChrisTheFreelancer.com and if you're considering coming to Bali as a digital nomad, you're probably tossing up between here in Ubud and down near the coast in Changu. Here in Changu, it's all about the trendy cafes, the nightlife and the beach. Whereas here in Ubud, it's more about relaxation, yoga and meditation. But of course, there's a lot more that separates these two areas than just the beach and the mountains. So in this video, we're going to dive deeper into Ubud versus Changu. What are the major differences and which one is best for you? All right, so if you've been following from the beginnings of this channel, you would remember that Bali was actually our first stop on our quote unquote digital nomad journey, i.e. our journey to working online and traveling slash living abroad. And back then I was working for a company back home in Australia. I was working full time hours basically. So I needed a productive space. I needed to know that my internet needs were taken care of. I needed to be somewhere um, that was consistent. And back then I was really interested in these digital nomad co-working spaces. And so I was very interested in this one space called Hubid co-working space, which is actually in Ubud. And so my life looked very different to what it looks now. Back then, I would uh, wake up around seven in the morning, have breakfast, and then I would go straight to the office, which was the co-working space. I would work the morning, have lunch, work the afternoon, come home, de-stress, have a massage, do laundry, watch YouTube, whatever, right? Uh, on the weekends, I would go into the mountains uh, go check out some of the sites to see and that was one of the funnest parts of, of being in Ubud actually. Back then we actually didn't know about this area called Changu and back then Changu was less developed than it is now but there was still um, a scene here, there was still a co-working space um, and so during that time uh, that we were in Bali we did the first two weeks in Ubud and then the second two weeks we did in Seminyak which for remote work I wouldn't necessarily recommend. I planned on going to this uh, co-working space called Lineup Hub, but when I got there, I, I just, it didn't, it wasn't the place for me. It wasn't as interesting as Hubert was. Um, but luckily somebody gave me a tip off and told me about this co-working space called Dojo. And Dojo has been the space I've been working out, out of most often while I've been here in Changu. And when I went there, I was just like, how did I not know about this place before? Um, they have an amazing community of digital nomads there. And back then, like I said, Changu was just getting started. So fast forward uh, years ahead and I've been traveling and working now for just over two years. And every time the conversation has come up for Bali, it's all been about Changu, Changu, Changu. So I kind of knew that when I came back to Bali, I had to check out this area called Changu. And now after a month here in Changu, I can definitely say that I support my decision to come to Changu and it's definitely been the area that I've preferred um, in terms of my experience, both in Ubud and in Changu. So, in this video, I want to talk about the comparison between the two. And it's not a battle royale to determine like what the best area is. This is more about like what's U Ubud all about, what's Changu all about, and how you can make a decision as to which one is right for you. So of course, one of the major differences in my experience between staying in Ubud and staying in Changu is the time period. I mean, it was a uh, little over two years ago that we were in Ubud. So of course, I wanted to go back, see what had changed and kind of uh, establish what the digital nomad lifestyle would be like in Ubud um, two years on. So what I found from our weekend away in Ubud was, yes, it was more closer to kind of tourist activities like seeing the beautiful rice fields or seeing waterfalls, um, checking out monkey forest. So that's all in cl close proximity. So I definitely recommend visiting Ubud. Um, and the other thing about that's great about Ubud is that you can walk everywhere if you stay kind of in the central area. 
it is more touristic in the sense that um, people are going there to vacation in the more traditional sense. Rather, here in Changu, I think people tend to stay a bit longer and it's more of an expat scene here. Um, so in Ubud, if you don't want to ride a motorcycle, you can definitely, or a scooter bike or whatever you want to call it, you can hear some of them behind, you definitely can do without in Ubud. Now in Changu, uh, I got a scooter bike as soon as I arrived here because it's almost impossible to walk everywhere in Changu. And I knew that from coming here last time. The other thing that you should note about Changu is that uh, you, you, you might find it hard to get uh, grabs, Ubers and Gojeks. Those three are the main ways to get around uh, using apps. So that's kind of been restricted by the local uh, taxi industry. So that's another consideration as well. You can definitely get a grab if you're in an uh, off street here or a Gojek, but sometimes it's gonna be difficult, um, if you're def especially if you're around uh, an area that's quite popular or there's other taxis, it's gonna be hard to get, get away with getting a grab, Gojek or Uber. Anyway, back to Ubud. So when we were in Ubud, we had to do some a little bit of work, uh, a little bit of stuff on the computer, and so I went on a little bit of a journey to find the best Wi-Fi. Uh, I didn't want to go back to Ubud because um, it's expensive for just one day, um, and I didn't want to spend the whole day there anyway. So Ubud's always a great option if you're in Ubud for a long period of time. But we just wanted somewhere like a cafe or a casual space to get some work done. Um, and so the first space we went to that I'd heard from another YouTuber that had good internet was Seminin Cafe. Um, and we went there and uh, we tied it in with lunch so it wasn't a complete waste of time but the internet wasn't great at all and so I didn't really get much done. We had our lunch and left. Then I checked on my phone for Work Hard Anywhere. This is an app that you can find remote work friendly um, cafes or, or places to work from. And I put in my criteria, PowerPoints, fast and free internet, and there was basically only one that showed up apart from Hubert, which was Kismet. So we went to Kismet, um, similar sort of situation. The internet was intermittent. It was good at some parts, but then not great at other times. Um, and then uh, we ended up at Starbucks in the end, which had probably the best internet that we'd experienced in Ubud. So comparing that to say Changu, um, Changu has so many work-friendly cafes here. It is ridiculous. Um, I'm actually doing an article on uh, places to work in Changu. So if you're interested, I will link that up. I'll put the URL right here on your screen. Uh, and also the link will be in the description but it's actually been quite challenging to create an exhaustive list of places you could work from in Changu because it pretty much there's a culture here where you can rock up at any cafe and just ask the Wi-Fi password, sit down and get some work done. That's a great thing about Changu. The other thing that Changu has over Ubud is nightlife. Um, you know, we've got beach clubs here, beach bars, plenty of uh, just just nightlife and it's and some crazy nightlife as well. Uh, I went to the lawn on my first night. I went to uh, Finn's Beach Club with some friends uh, last Sunday. And so you'll find that people are a lot more focused on going out here and enjoying themselves. I definitely wanted a little bit more of that. Um, so that's been good for me to kind of get out there and, and let loose. The other thing that's really obvious is of course the beach. So if you want to do surfing or anything like that, you definitely want to stay in Changu. Even just going down to the beach to watch sunset is a bit of a tradition I've found here from the people that are staying here uh, long term. They pretty much go into the sunset every day because it is a beautiful sunset and it reminds you of where you are and how lucky you are to be in beautiful Bali um, working remotely. So we've talked about work, we've talked about going out. Um, what else is there? Um, of course, you've got fitness, and uh, if you want to get fit, especially here in Changu, this is an amazing place to get fit. You've got two CrossFit gyms. Uh, I went to CrossFit Wonderlust, but um, I did my back, so I didn't uh, go back again. Uh, nothing against CrossFit Wonderlust. It was, uh, I had a week back and just, yeah, let's leave it there. But um, two CrossFit gyms, you've got kind of group fitness kind of establishments like Nirvana Strength and yoga studios. So there's a lot 
in the way of fitness here in Changu. Um, if you want to do yoga specifically though, Ubud probably is the better space for you because it's all about yoga up there. There's a famous yoga place called the Yoga Barn in Ubud. And if you're into meditation and, and kind of that spiritual vibe, uh, Ubud's probably more of a place for you. The other thing I'll say is that Changu is kind of a young and rough around the edges vibe. I'm not saying it's uh, um, people are rough or, or bad here, but I'm saying if you're maybe an older um, uh, traveler, maybe you want to get away from loud bikes and from um, kind of poor roads, you might want to stay up in Ubud. Hey, I'm just talking about um, Ubud and Changu, comparing the differences. Anything you want to add? Ricardo just walked in. You love Changu, don't you? Yes, I love Changu. Yeah? Yeah. And you were saying the... Uh, the nightlife, the nightlife. The surfing, he's got a surfboard there. Yeah, yeah. and uh, well, there's also like art galleries and art galleries. Okay. Yeah, a few ones. There's free concerts like every two or three days. Like, yeah, yeah. So it's always happening something. So it's cool. Awesome. All right, yeah. thanks, man. <laughs> All right, so there you go, guys. Another perspective on Changu. Um, I've taken the camera off the tripod now because I'm running out of light. I decided to film this at sunset here on the uh, top floor of our villa here. Basically, to summarize, Ubud versus Changu. Ubud is probably the place I'd recommend to you if you want to um, just be chill, not have so many distractions like you do in Changu. Uh, it's probably quieter up there. And if you just want to get into your work and maybe meditate, do some yoga in the mornings um, and be closer to the tourist sites, uh, Ubud might be for you. For everyone else, Changu I think is amazing. It's uh, got nightlife, got amazing cafes connected to internet and that remote work culture that you can just show up to any cafe and start work. Got awesome co-working spaces like Dojo. I mentioned nightlife, I mentioned co-working. Fitness everywhere, you got those two CrossFit gyms. Um, you've got uh, yoga here as well. And of course, you've got the beach. So if you like surfing, uh, you're definitely gonna prefer Changu. So I hope that informs your decision on where to travel to as a digital nomad. Ubud versus Changu. Um, you know, it's not one is better than the other, but just different considerations for each. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in concepts like remote work, travel, location independence, online businesses, freedom, all that stuff anything we talked about today if you're into subscribe to the channel and uh yeah i just want to thank you guys for watching and uh we'll see you in the next video bye